How's the royal family? I pray that everyone is doing well. Well, my royal family, we're going to say this the proper way. This handsome young man here, our royal son, is Sharika Adams' son. And if anybody remember what happened back in the day, and this is Sharika Adams right here, she was killed. Um, um, because this motherfucker right here, Ray Carruth, didn't want to take responsibility because she was pregnant. And if anybody, a lot of people is privy to it because it's been about 18 years now. What all went down and he hid in the trunk and all that bullshit. <laughs> well, the audacity of this motherfucker. So I'm going to read something to the royal family. I don't really want to look at his face too much, but it caused this child a great deal of damage. He's a very, very handsome young man. And this is his grandmother here, Sandra. So let's go back here so we don't lose sight. So here I'm reading, and I'm not going to read it all. I'm going to read what's necessary. So uh, former Carolina Panthers wide receiver Ray Carruth, who has spent the past 17 years. 17 pops up all the time, my royal family. In a North Carolina prison for conspiracy to murder his pregnant girlfriend opened up for the first time in a handwritten letter to the victim's mother. Carruth wrote a 15-page letter to Sandra Adams, the mother of Sharika Adams, that was sent to the Charlotte's television station WBTV. He also spoke at length by phone with the station about the letter, accepting responsibility for the 1999 conspiracy to murder Sharika Adams and expressing interest in gaining custody of his son. <laughs> this is not funny. It's just the audacity of some people. Motherfucker, the reason why your son is in the condition that he is in because of you. And his mama is dead. And so, let me skip this along because I don't want to talk about the gory details. But basically, he's saying here, I should be raising my son. His mother should be raising his son. The mother gone, brother. Carew said, Miss Adams should not be doing this. I want to take the responsibility back. I feel like he might not ever have his mother in his life, but he don't make sense. He could still have me. I could still make a difference. I don't think that anyone, anyone's responsibility when I'm still here. That doesn't make sense. I don't think that's anyone's. Okay. I don't think that's anyone's responsibility when I'm still here. You don't even got shit. Sandra Adams told the Observer on Monday that she would not relinquish custody of Chancellor to Karouf. That is it and that is all my royal family. I will put the rest of the article in there for the royal family if you want to read it all. I have some videos to play the royal family so we can continue to hear the rhetoric. This is so sad and pathetic. Wide receiver played here for the Carolina Panthers. And in almost the same amount of time, he sat quietly behind bars, convicted in the murder of a beautiful young Sharika Adams. But today, Ray Carruth is finally breaking his silence. It came in the form of a neatly written letter, more than 3,000 words strung together on 15 pages. Together, they provide a voice for a man who's chosen not to have one for nearly two decades. The world watched as the star Carolina Panthers wide receiver morphed from a person people wanted to be Two more days, I think I'll be fine. into one they hated. Federal agents arrested a somber Ray Carruth in western Tennessee after what could be the greatest fumble of his career. The ultimate fall from grace landed the talented athlete a sentence of 18 to 24 years behind bars for conspiring to kill Sharika Adams, the mother of Carruth's unborn child. He was shot four times 
in an allegedly pathetic scheme. Luckily, none of the bullets hit the baby. Great! Yeah. That baby is now a young man. And that young man, Chancellor Lee Adams, who has bright eyes and an infectious smile, is why Carruth says he's finally speaking out. Carruth's starting words thank Adams for the unconditional care, compassion, love, and support she's shown Chancellor from the beginning. The letter is to Miss Adams. Why not yes. just send it to her? Well, because in the past I've written Miss Adams, um, and most everything that I've said in the letter I've actually said to her. Um, starting with the apology. After his shift as a barber at the Sampson Correctional Institution in Eastern North Carolina, Ray Carruth called me to talk about why he's sharing his truth now. I feel responsible for everything that happened, and I just want her to know that truly I am sorry for everything. What exactly are you apologizing for? I'm apologizing for the loss of her daughter. I'm apologizing for the impairment of my son. Caruth wouldn't speak about the specifics of that night in 1999 when Sharika was shot four times by someone Caruth hired. But he does take responsibility for the actions that left his son without a mother and a father. Of course, if I could change anything, I'd change the whole situation. His mother would still be here, and I wouldn't be where I'm at. So. That's what I would want to change. I would want to change for the incident to never have happened at all. Caruth's letter offers not only an apology, but also an opportunity to push back on what he says are inaccurate narratives and headlines that have populated his story over the years. He knows his words may bring more anger and hate against him and writes, I've long accepted my lot as a social pariah, but is setting the record straight to gain much needed peace of mind. From the moment the story broke, we heard Sharika referred to as Karuth's girlfriend. In fact, this neighbor told WBTV at the time he heard her use that word to police. She first said it was her husband, then she said it was her boyfriend that had shot her. But Karuth says the two were practically strangers. According to him, they hooked up multiple times but were never in a relationship. He writes, Never was Sharika under the illusion, or delusion, that I was ever going to propose marriage to her. Lust was the tie that bound us, not like or love, and neither one of us was ever guilty of believing anything contrary to this. Caruth admits he broached the subject of abortion when Sharika told him she might be pregnant, but he says he never brought it up again when she expressed her desire to keep the child that fought an uphill battle from the beginning. Because of the shooting orchestrated by his own father, Chancellor was born premature with a cerebral palsy diagnosis. Caruth has met his son twice in the early years of the boy's life, but even from prison, he's closely followed news stories documenting Chancellor's extraordinary progress. What do you see when you see a picture or a video of Chancellor? I see a kid that is filled with joy and happiness, and that makes me feel good. I see myself in him, I see his mother, um, I just see a kid that's not aware of the difficulties that he has. He, I can tell he's being loved, I can tell he's being well taken care of, um, I don't know, I just see a spirit that's capable of conquering any difficulties that come his way, and that makes me happy. Recently, Adams has spoken publicly about her willingness to let Chancellor get to know his father, especially as his October release date approaches. Caruth says he wants nothing more, and has even sent visitation forms to Adams, but never received a response. I feel like I owe Chancellor, you know, I let him down as he came into this world, and the only way that I can make that right, the only way that I can reconcile my relationship with my son is to be there for him and to be a father and a dad to him going forward. But Caruth's fatherly desires don't just stop at a relationship. He wants to eventually care for his son. I should be raising my son. His mother should be raising her son. Miss Adams should not be doing this. And I want that responsibility back. In the letter, Caruth writes, I mean, come on, Miss Adams. The reality is you aren't going to be around forever. At some point, someone else will have to be responsible for Chancellor's care. I feel like he might not ever have his mother in his life, but he could still have me, and I could still make a difference. Um, and I just don't think that that's anybody else's responsibility when I'm still here. But why would the man who's responsible for so much heartache deserve redemption? Caruth says he's found something he never had before. Are you the same person that you were 20 years ago? Absolutely not. I think back then I was very mature, very 
self-centered. When I first got incarcerated, I had to sit down and ask myself, like, how did this happen? How are you here? And the number one answer that I had was, I didn't have a relationship with God. And I know some people might smirk or laugh about that, but I, I know now that I have a very real relationship with God. And that's changed the way that I see and view a lot of things. 17 years in prison has given him a lot of time to think. I think the biggest lesson I've learned is that the choices that we make in life don't just affect us. They affect your loved ones, your family, the people around you. Um, and that's something I didn't realize before. In eight months, Caruth will be a free man. Adams has said she'll be at the gates with Chancellor waiting for him, but Caruth wants to start building that relationship now. Ever the athlete, he ends the letter writing, Ball is in your court. You and Chancellor take care and be blessed. Respectfully, Ray Caruth. It's been two decades. All right, my royal family, let me shut this down quickly. And before I go to the next video, um... I'm going to just keep it core because I watched this trial when this went down. I remember distinctly because I wasn't working. I had just got laid off of work. And given the gravity of the situation and also given the gravity of how he treated his first child. See, Ray Caruth is from the Bay Area. He's from Sacramento, California. He has another child, older. And he didn't want to have nothing to do with that child at all. Um, he was a dude that did not want responsibility, but he wanted to have reckless sex. So, um, this is one, because I believe that the child should know their father, but I'm just going to keep it core. I have misgivings. It's more than a na notion to take care of Chancellor, given his physical abilities. And it is obvious that his grandmother has done an excellent job. And I can imagine that there are enough people in her family that he is familiar with. If something happened to her, he will be in good hands. But even Ray Caruth's mother did not give a fuck what happened if anybody remember that trial oh she had a major attitude so i have not seen anything throughout these last 18 years 18 or 17 whichever you want to call it where his even his own mother tried to forge a relationship with her grandson she was just pissed because that was affecting her immediate situation she wasn't going to get that house. She wasn't going to get that car. You know, son was just reckless. He was fucking everybody. So in this particular situation, um, I don't think um, this child would benefit one way or the other knowing his father. I, I could be wrong. I'm, you know, I may be tongue-tied on this one. But anyway, let me play this other video. Because I know the royal family have many to, much to say. Well, let's hear um, his grandmother. Hear what she has to say. In the clip that I saw from Ray that he wants to raise chancellor, and I can pretty much defensive, defensively say that that's not going to happen. Um, number one, North Carolina law was passed that if a person is convicted of conspiracy to murder the other parent that their parental rights were terminated so number one the law is on my side he has no parental rights number two chancellor is an adult and he has a say so in where he will uh, choose to continue to stay where he's been for 18 years and been loved and nurtured and raised versus going with the complete stranger that tried to murder him uh, and number three, I don't think Ray Karouf um, is patient enough or has enough love and nurturing to give Chancellor all that he needs um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, uh, I heard that statement too, and I don't know what 
Ray, why Ray Carruth thinks he will outlive me. Uh, I'm a Christian. I'm going to live long and live strong. And uh, he may not outlive me. But I do have a plan in place. Chancellor has other loving family members uh, that are close by, that are involved in his uh, upbringing. And so I already have a plan in place that Chancellor will be raised by family members who already love him. Uh, so I don't think that's going to happen. All right, all right, my royal family. The sister is on top of her game. So, the question that I asked the royal family, let's keep it honest. Do you think Chancellor should know his father? Do you think Ray Carruth should have an opportunity to care for his royal son? Now, you don't look at him as royal because he wanted to get rid of him. I'm going to put that out there. Mm -mm. It's a lot to deal with him because he has a lot of of issues too as well but we have to keep in mind that he wanted to kill her in order to kill him but y'all keep it core my royal family you're not gonna get attacked on this channel keep it core like we always do so my royal family render your voice with your beautiful divine words and as always my royal family i thank you for your love I thank you for your support. And with that said, I shake.